Okay guys, so last bit on numerical methods right now, should finish up nice and quick. We're just going to think about when newton raphson doesn't work, because those previous examples we've seen, it seems to get to the root really, really, really quickly, but there are some times when it's not so good. So here's a reminder of what the function looks like. newton raphson can fail in a couple of different scenarios. So here's an example that we have here. If the starting value, x0, was the stationary point, then f dash x0 is equal to 0, resulting in a division by 0 in the formula. So if the gradient function at a particular part is 0, you get a divide by 0, which means it won't work. The reason this happens is because the tangent would never come back down to be able to meet the axis. And remember, this is telling us where does it next meet the axis? Where would it meet the where would that tangent cross at the axis? So this one has a division by zero, but the reason it's happening is because the tangent will never cross the x-axis. So you cannot do the newton raphson method if the x naught value corresponds to a stationary point on the curve. You also have to be careful about um, the same drawbacks from iterations. If you start with particular values of x, it can diverge. So for this example that we've got here, the xi, xi is just referring to x1, 2, 3, 4, any of them. They can oscillate either side of 0, but they actually gradually get further away. So if you look at x0, when you draw a tangent on, it comes over here and it crosses at x1. Then you draw a tangent on here and it crosses over at x2. And then the tangent over there would cross even further at x3. So this is not a divergent one. The newton raphson method in this case can also get further and further away. And I think the best way for us to do this is with a couple of questions. And these are actually from the new specification. So we're going to do some of this new specification stuff together. Okay. Um, if you want to, you can just have a go at doing this yourself. Um, or you can just watch me go through this one. And then we've got one more exam question and then a modelling bit. And then we're done on this topic. So it says here that the value of beta lies in the interval 1.5 to 3. So it then says a student takes 3 as her first approximation to beta. Given that f of 3 equals minus 1.4189 and f dash 3 equals minus 8.3078 to four decimal places, apply the newton raphson method once to obtain a second approximation to beta. Give your answer to two decimal places. So we know that the second approximation, x1, will be equal to the first approximation minus the function of the first approximation, divided by the derivative of the first approximation that we've got there. Now, the first approximation that they were asked was 3. So we're going to have 3, and we're minusing the function at 3. Well, the function at 3 is minus 1.4189, and the derivative is minus 8.3078. We actually haven't had to do any calculating. They've just given it to us here. Now, you should notice you've got a negative and a negative, so those negatives cancel out. So it's just going to be 3 minus this thing that we've got here. So let's actually just work that out in the calculator. So that's 3 minus 1.4189 over 8.3078. And they wanted it two decimal places, so we just get 2.83. It then says a different student takes a starting value of 1.5 as his first approximation to beta. Use figure 3 to explain whether or not the newton raphson method with this starting value gives, gives a good second approximation to beta. Well, it looks like, if they're talking about the value of beta is in between 1.5 and 3, it looks like this is the root that he's actually trying to find out. It looks like it's going to be this root. So I'm going to go to my shapes here. And we're going to just see what happens to the newton raphson method if I take a tangent at that particular point, 1.5. Now, the tangent to 1.5 looks like it would be going over to this value here, which would then correspond to this point. And then if I drew a tangent at that particular place, It then looks like it would correspond to that point. And actually, it looks like what's going to happen is it's going to give us an approximation for this root over here. So drawing the tangent on, it then somehow makes me end up at this root that is over here at A instead. Okay, 
Um, so I don't know if this is going to be very good. Let's have a look and see what the mark scheme says. Actually, we probably should finish the question and explain it. So we should say here, use figure three to explain whether or not the newton raphson method for this starting value gives a good second approximation for B. So we should say, this is not a good starting value. as it appears to give us an approximation for the other route. Let's just see if that's what the mark scheme said. So we didn't do part A and part B because that was some other part. So part C, yep, we've got 2.83, and for part D, the first mark, draw a tangent to the curve at 1.5 and identify as possibly by writing x2, where the tangent cuts the x-axis. So yep, there we did it over there. And then it says and concludes that the second approximation is not good because it's not in the interval 1, 3, or you can say it's nowhere near the root beta. Yep, I think we've said that it's not near the root beta. We've said it gives us an approximation for the other root, so I think we've definitely covered those things that they wanted us to do. Okay, so this question now is like a full newton raphson question. We're going to see what happens. So we've got this particular equation, and it says it's got exactly one root. Show that for this equation, the newton raphson formula can be written as this. Well, from the formula book, we know that um, if our f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus x squared minus 1, then f dash x is going to be 6x squared plus 2x. So then our um, formula would just be that xn plus 1 equals, um, or it says that x1 is equal to 1. So it would be equal to, oh, sorry a sec, let's just actually incorporate this. xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus 2xn cubed plus xn squared minus 1 all over 6xn squared plus 2xn. So this is what the formula is. But they've got something that looks a bit different. So what do you think we need to do here and here? Well, they've got it just written as one single term. So I'm going to need to give this a common denominator. I'm going to need to have xn, 6xn squared plus 2xn. I'm multiplying that so that it can have a common denominator. And then I'm going to minus 2xn cubed plus xn squared. That whole thing is being minus now minus 1, all over 6xn squared plus 2xn. So we've got the denominator matching. We now just need to see that the top works out the same. So we now get 6xn cubed plus 2xn squared. Then careful with the subtracting here, we get minus 2xn cubed minus uh, xn squared plus 1, all over 6xn squared plus 2xn. I wonder if I'm going to run out of space here. Um, I might do, so I'll have to do some of this um, over in this section. Let's see if I can just squeeze this in. So we get 4xn cubed plus xn squared plus 1 over 6xn squared plus 2xn, which is exactly what they wanted us to do here. Then it says, using the formula for part A with x1 equals 1, find the value of x2 and x3. So I'm just going to substitute in that x2 is going to be equal to 4 times, and then it says that x1 is 1, so it's 4 times 1 cubed plus 1 squared plus 1, all over 6 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1. Well, that's pretty easy, but I'm going to set it up as a... Um, an iterative formula, so I've got 1 equals, so I'm going to do uh, 4 answer cubed plus answer squared plus 1, all over 6 answer squared plus 2 answer, and that should give me that my value of x2 is 0 0.75, and then my value of x3 is 2 thirds, or 0 0.666. Maybe they want to give us that as a fraction. I don't know. Now, I like to just see what happens here. If I keep pressing equals, we eventually see that we seem to settle on 0 0.6527.
So these are getting kind of close, which is good. It then says in this part, explain why for this question the newton raphson method cannot be used with x1 equals 0. Well, if you think about what we've got here, when x equals 0, we know that f dash of 0 is equal to 0, because you have 6, 0 squared plus 2 times 0. When x equals 0, f dash, um, f dash 0 equals 0. So the tangent would not meet the axis again. OK, let's just see if we've got the same as the mark scheme. So yeah, beginning bit, we set it up, added the fractions together, and we came up with this. We got 3 quarters and 2 thirds. So here we go, accept any reasons that it can't be used. There is a stationary point, x equals 0. The tangent to the curve would not meet the axis. The tangent to the curve is horizontal. So we would have got all of those marks there as well. OK, very last bit on this now. I'm just going to see that you could do these things in modelling situations, but there's really nothing that's new. It just says that the price of a car in pounds x years after purchase is modelled by this particular equation. Um, so the function is this, find using the model, sorry, use the model to find the value to the nearest hundred pounds of the car 10 years after purchase. So if it's 10 years after purchase, that means that we're finding out f of 10. So we're just going to substitute in 10. So that's 15,000 times 0 0.85 to the power of 10 minus 1,000 sine of 10. And I'm guessing we're going to be in radians here because we're going to be doing some stuff with um, calculus. So I'm in radians mode in my calculator. So it's 15,000 times 0 0.85 to the power of 10 minus 1,000 sine of 10. And the value that we've got of the car, uh, and it wants it to the nearest hundreds of pounds. So we've got 3497, which is going to be 3,000 500 pounds to the nearest hundreds of pounds. It then says show that it has a root between 19 and 20. So I'm going to say that f of 19 is going to be equal to, I'm just going to substitute in 19 now, so I've got 15,000 times 0 0.85 to the 19 minus 1,000 sine of 19. Oh, I typed that in wrong, let's just quickly go back. Sine of 19. So we get 534.11 dot dot dot. And I'm going to type in f of 20 as well and see what that does differently. And you get minus 331.55. So you need to say change in sign f of x is continuous. So, root between 19 and 20. Then it says for part C, find the derivative of this. So, f dash x is just going to be equal to, now I'm not sure if you remember how to do these, but to differentiate this, you're going to have your 15,000 which stays there, and it's kind of like an exponential function, so you still have the same thing, you have 0.85 to the power of x, but then you also multiply it by the ln of 0 0.85 as well. This is how you differentiate 0 0.85 to the x. Keep it the same, but you also multiply it by the, the log of 0 0.85 as well. And sine differentiates to cos, so we get minus 1000 cos x, like this. That's us done for that first part. And then for part d, it says taking 19.5 as a first approximation, apply it once to obtain a second approximation for when the value of the car is zero. Give your answer to three decimal places. So we're going to take 19.5 as the first approximation. So we're going to say <coughs> we're going to say that x1 is equal to 19.5 minus f of 19.5 divided by f dash of 19.5. And I'm not going to bother writing this all out. I'm actually just going to go straight in with what it should be on the calculator. So that's 19.5 minus. 15,000, 0.85 to the power of 19.5, 
minus 1,000 sine of 19.5 divided by 15,000 multiplied by 0 0.85 to the power of 19.5. Sorry, and then I'm going to multiply that by ln of 0 0.85 and I'm going to minus 1,000 of cos of 19.5. And whack that all in the calculator. It wants it to three decimal places, and we get 19.528. And how many years is it? 19.528 years. That's part D. And it says criticize this model with respect to the value of the car as it gets older. So for some values, of x, the car value becomes negative. This is not possible. And we saw that earlier on, e.g. at 20 years, value is minus 331 pounds. That doesn't make any sense, okay? And you could also try that with some later years as well. Let's just pretend that x was, I don't know, 50 years old. 15,000 times 0 0.85 to the power of 50 minus 1,000 sine of 50. You get a positive value then. So that's why it's not always negative. Just some of the values, it is negative. Okay, so that's enough for you to have a look at exercise 10D and exercise 10C, and that's finished on um, numerical methods. A nice, easy topic, I think. Okay, guys, see you soon. Bye.